What good is a comic book hero if you don't have a good villain? Pretty standard, right? Hey guys, Joel from Real Talk, and today I'm going to be going through the top 10 list of comic book villain portrayals in movies. This will span through all comic book movies that we've gone through in the past and in current times as well. Don't forget guys, this is also just a top 10 list of my own opinion, so if you have a different top 10 list, comment below and let me know what your list is. Without further ado, let's go with my personal favorite list of comic book villains in movies. Emma. Banshee. We were supposed to protect them! Eric, where were you, Charles? You abandoned us all. On number 10, I have Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender in X-Men First Class and Days of Future Past. One thing I loved about the revival of the new X-Men movies was Michael Fassbender and uh, James McAvoy's chemistry on screen when they were introduced in First Class because you saw the roots of what would become of their relationship as far as friends go and you saw them develop a real respect for each other and that's how it's always been between Magneto and Charles Xavier in the movies and the comic books and in the TV shows and that's what makes their relationship very special and unique from other different types of supervillains and superheroes clashing. Xavier believed that humans and mutants can come together in agreement and that they can eventually build a stronger and better future for all mankind and for all mutant kind as well. Michael Fassbender's Magneto believed that the only way to reach towards peace between the two would be that the mutants should take over. I think you're confusing peace with quiet. Yeah, uh huh? What's the vibranium for? I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. <laughs> We have Ultron played by James Spader who made his debut in the Age of Ultron released in 2015. I know it's a very recent comic book villain portrayed in a movie, but there's a lot of reasons why I love Ultron. He's funny, he's witty, he finds himself flattering when he speaks, just like Tony Stark. And that's really one of the main things that makes Ultron really good is that he is an evil version of Tony Stark. He makes all the jokes. It's kind of a bad thing for me because I think he would have been much higher, much better if he was more dark and if he wasn't so much trying to be funny but he was still a person with character nonetheless and for a cgi character james spader did a fantastic job portraying a villain on a screen being in cgi pretty much you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight what i always ask that of all my prey i just like the sound of it <laughs> Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> we have Joker played by Jack Nicholson. And I know there's a lot of arguing going on which is better, Heath or Jack Nicholson's Joker. But I separate the two now because now we have another Joker played by Jared Leto in the mix. But Jack Nicholson's Joker was very unique because he was not lighthearted, but he wasn't dark. You know, he took situations um, that were serious and made them funny. But he knew that he had to kill people in the process. He knew he had to get his work done. And whenever he confronted Batman at the end of the movie, you know, you, you saw the two sides of the coin, you know, meet finally face to face. I thought that his performance in that movie alone was pretty good. Um, was it memorable? I, I don't know about that because, I mean, Heath Ledger's Heath Ledger. But Jack Nicholson's really well known for a lot of other roles, and I felt like this movie was more Jack Nicholson being Jack Nicholson, and that's perfectly fine because Jack Nicholson is awesome either way. But as for the character of the Joker, I didn't feel like he was the Joker on screen, but still a great performance overall. You're pathetically predictable, like a moth to the flame. What about my generous proposal? Are you in or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Wrong answer! Oh, great. He is, in fact, the Green Goblin, played by William Dafoe. And, man, did Sam Raimi let him go beyond his limits. I mean, he really wanted Norman Osborn to go further and to go you know, to an, a more extreme role. And if you saw the 90s Spider-Man, you know, animated series before this movie, you definitely get a lot of Sam Raimi's um, influences from that TV show into this movie, the whole uh, mirror thing, the whole 
goblin half you know mr H you know jackal mr hyde kind of thing and i really thought that it was perfect for this kind of character he was a bit goofy at times but it was funny because i love william defoe and i love the fact that he was kind of over the top because sam raimi let him go over the top and it made him very unique and different from a lot of other evil villains in the marvel cinematic universe and in marvel in general for the first time ever i felt like the green goblin was the green goblin because of himself and I think that that was something really cool because it gave Spider-Man a villain to confront after his origin and after the Green Goblin's origin. And seeing them face to face was funny and comedic, yet very satisfying. And so that's why Norman Osborn, played by William Dafoe, also known as the Green Goblin, from the 2002 Spider-Man movie, is my number seven. You really think that just because you have an idea, it belongs to you? Your father... He helped give us the atomic bomb. Now, what kind of world would it be today if he was as selfish as you? Number six on my list is Obadiah, played by the awesome Jeff Bridges, who made his debut and first movie, pretty much, in the first Iron Man in 2008. I really enjoy Jeff Bridges' performances in every movie, pretty much. But in this movie, he, his character was very unique because he started as a, a guide and a mentor to Tony Stark and to you know, carry his hand through and to learn the business of his father. And even though we know Tony Stark as the lead man himself, you know, he had to have somebody help him early on in his life and early on in his career. And that person was Obadiah. And all, I loved Jeff Bridges' performance because he carried over a confidence in himself. He carried a confidence in what he was doing. And he knew what kind of what kind of goal he was trying to reach in the entire movie. And villains today really lack that focus. You know, they have a hope, they have something they want to live up to, but they don't have a clear, clear goal. And you don't see very much clarity in the villains on what they want. The one of the most memorable scenes was him visiting Tony Stark in his home and taking out his life support and basically putting him silent. It's the first time in a long time we see Tony Stark being silent. And Jeff Bridges talking down to Robert Downey Jr. in this scene was just one of the best things about Obadiah and one of the best things about Jeff Bridges' performance and that's why he made it into number six. Their death galvanized the city into saving itself and Gotham has limped on ever since. We are back to finish the job. And this time no misguided idealists will get in the way. Like your father, you lack the courage to do all that is necessary. If someone stands in the way of true justice, you simply walk up behind them and stab them in the heart. Number five on my list is a well-known actor that we all love and adore, and his name is Liam Neeson, who has been Aslan, he's been Zeus, the God of Thunder, and also he's trained Batman, he's trained Obi-Wan Kenobi. We can go down the list of his resume and see how awesome Liam Neeson is, but to me, Ra's al Ghul was his best performance, I feel, out of everyone that I just listed, because he was the mentor to Christian Bell's Batman, he was the one who implanted the idea of fighting with a mask he you know he he really gave bruce wayne some direction towards his life because at this point bruce wayne was just fighting in prison bruce wayne was just fighting in a lot in random areas but liam neeson's character never felt like a real real evil villain because his thought behind his evil madness was pretty it was a good one because he felt like humanity was becoming corrupt he felt like there was a need to, to cleanse the entire world and it's true you know humanity can be stupid sometimes but um raise i'll go going to his extreme is what causes him to clash heads with batman liam neeson's performance was just great he was charismatic he was calm he was collective you know even when he was about to die he was calm and collective and that just tells you how awesome of a character liam neeson's raise al Ghul was and that's why he's my number five my boss You once spoke to me about intelligence. That it was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. A privilege. These things have turned you into something you're not. Don't listen to them. Number four, Otto Octavius, played by Alfred Molina. Here we have a, a scientist whose ambition is to create something beautiful and to create something magnificent, but that is the ultimate cause of what he, he the evil he becomes. 
And that's a very tragic story. And you don't see this very often in supervillains. With Alfred Molina's Otto Octavius, you know, that was the biggest thing, in my opinion, for his character. Because his first failure, he hated, you know, he hated to fail. He hated to lose. He hated to lose control of things. And that was his problem. And whenever he tried to control things, he eventually lost control of his own mind and fell towards, you know, fell, you know, fell towards crime. And that collided him with Spider-Man. And Spider-Man, also Peter Parker, had to talk him down, had to tell him, you know, this is a better way. There's a better way. You don't have to do this evil thing. You don't have to look, resort to this kind of violence. You don't have to resort to this type of madness. And he reminded him of all the great things that he was able to do. And that connection between him and Peter Parker is what made his villain very special because he gave his life at the end of the movie to save the world from his own creation. And that's something that's very important to see in a supervillain because that arc is so vital to a lot of characters in comic books because you can't fit all their storylines and all their character traits in a single movie. However, you can introduce a single story arc to branch in elements from all of those things into one story and to make it very beautiful and that's why i love Otto octavius from the spider-man 2 movie because his story was very beautiful yet tragic and ultimately the performance followed up very well by alfred molina and he's definitely one of the best comic book villains i have seen and that's why he's number four on my list it burns you to have come so close to have the tesseract to have power, unlimited power, and for what? A warm light for all mankind to share. And then to be reminded what real power is. Number three, we move on to a fan favorite amongst a lot of Marvel Universe fans and a lot of comic book fans in general, and that's Loki played by Tom Hiddleston, who made his debut in the first Thor in 2011. And we all know him very much more for the Avengers performance and what he did in that movie. Joss Whedon really let Tom Hiddleston perform up to his standard in this movie. You know, he was very calm. He was very cool. He was very collective. He was always on top of a lot of things that were going around around him. You know, he was always on top of situations. He was always taking advantage of people. He was very much the, you know, the deceiver. He, he was what he was. Zoki is a deceiver. And Tom Hiddleston was a huge deceiver in this movie because he gave you a false sense that, you know, maybe he's not so much of a bad guy. Maybe he, he'll come around. But no, you know, he's always trying to make himself better than Thor. And that's re really one of the reasons why you have to follow what through with this character. And including in his other movie performances in Thor 1 and Thor 2 because you see the root of what his character is becoming early on. And then you see a branch on to the Avengers, and then you see a branch even more into Thor 2. And that's very important for a character. And Tom Hiddleston's performance and his growth as an actor is fantastic. You know, you know him showing up at Comic-Con in his Loki suit and in his Loki hairstyle was fantastic. It was something great for the fans. And that's what I appreciate about new comic book villains is that they're really embracing their role. And they're really taking advantage of the fan base. And they're really saying... You know, you guys love the character, so do I. So let's love them together. So Loki is number three. I don't think I can stop them all. Still unwilling to make sacrifices. That's what makes you weak. Number two on my list is Magneto, played by Ian McKellen. I know I mentioned earlier about Michael Fassbender's Magneto and how fantastic that performance was, but Ian McKellen is, in fact, Magneto. You know, like I mentioned earlier about him and Charles Xavier having a great, you know, face-off, having a great respect for each other and some sort of understanding for each other. You know, Magneto, Ian McKellen, and Patrick Stewart were just just bread and butter in my opinion in the movies because they were in the same boat they were in the same sort of state of mind they're both calm they were both very very intelligent it's just that magneto was more of a forcing person he was more of an action rather than words type of person and you really get to see that with ian mckellen you know he goes to leaps and boundaries to get what he wants and to get the, his goal across he's also influenced by his past and his troubles of, of course with his parents dying in world war ii and we saw that origin explored in you know, uh, X-Men First Class, and you see the person he becomes early on, but whenever he shows up as Ian McKellen, he has a sense of calmness to him, but he has control, and that's something he seeks amongst all X-Men movies, he seeks to have the ultimate control of everything. If tomorrow I tell the press that, like, a gangbanger will get shot, or a truckload of soldiers will be blowing up, 
nobody panics. Because it's all part of the plan. But when I say that one little old mare will die, well, then everyone loses their minds. Introduce a little anarchy. Upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. I'm an agent of chaos. We all knew this was coming. We all knew that this was going to happen. It is Heath Ledger's Joker. And in my opinion, not only one of the best comic book villains in movies of all time, but one of the best villains of movies of all time. You know, this man on screen perfectly reflects what Batman isn't. And when you see, when you get past that, there's much more to his performance than just that. This man is full of madness. He's full of chaos. He has some crazy ideology of what is real and what isn't. He feels that chaos is really what controls the world, you know? His speeches, his performance, performances, all his dialogue, all delivered perfectly well by Heath Ledger, and Heath Ledger drove himself to the absolute limit with this character, and the Joker on the screen is one of the most intimidating, most uncomfortable, one of the most suspenseful villains you've seen on screen because when he carries his way into a scene you do not know what he's going to do when he first introduced himself to the gang mobs i had no idea he was going to pull out a pencil and stab a guy in the eye and he has a pencil with him so he can do that and that's just crazy he walks around with a pencil in his suit so that he's ready to do something crazy like that He's also on a constant mission to prove to Batman that his ideology is wrong and that the Joker's ideology is right. He feels that people will break if they're pushed to their absolute limit. His performance was one of the best I've ever seen of any actor on any role. And that's why he is number one. So like I said before, if you have a different opinion on your top 10 list, comment below and let me know what your top 10 list as well. Don't hesitate to leave a like for this video, guys. And also, don't hesitate to click that subscribe button as well. That would be fantastic. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos here on this channel as well. This has been Joe from Real Talk. Go watch some movies.